Kent in the studio with us. Students from Homer Center High School, Mr. Stephen Hall is the social studies teacher who has accompanied them here today. Good morning to you. Good morning. How are you today? Wonderful. And who have you brought with you? I brought three students with me um, from our Interact Club at Homer Center. I've got Caitlin Hipshin, who's the class president. I've got Tyler Sprankle, the vice president and Rebecca Smith, who's the junior advisor. Okay, so we're going to talk about Interact Club with our students. Come on up to the microphones, and uh, you can introduce yourself. And since there are two young ladies with us, just to distinguish one's voice from the other, go ahead and introduce yourselves. Hi, I'm Caitlin Hipshim. Mm -hmm. I'm Rebecca Smith. Uh-huh. And we could probably figure out the, the young man's voice. Hi, I'm Tyler Sprankle. <laughs> you can join us on Facebook Live here this morning, and we're going to talk with our students from Homer Center Schools. All right, so Interact Club, tell me about it. Who wants to be take the lead here? I'll start real quick, and I'll let my students then talk about some events we've done. Interact Club started three years ago at Homer Center, and it's a community service-based organization. We try to get the students out into the community at least once a month for one big event, mm -hmm. and I'll let some of the students share some of the events that they've enjoyed in the past. All right, very good. We'll just... um, our first event was repainting like benches at Floodway Park mm -hmm. just to better our community. We've co we've did um made cards for veterans too during the holidays. We've collected items for homeless people. Um and somebody else can say more. And and you've got even more activities. Well, even this weekend we're uh, holding a uh, a fall festival at the uh, Alton Fire Hall to uh give back to the community because they, uh, they've helped us out in, uh, several times like with different football events and different school functions. Mm -hmm. They've been very courteous for uh, lending out the, uh, the area to use. And um, the uh, Wonderful Walk for Life was another event that we, uh, we helped with registration and uh, making sure everything went smoothly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're at uh, t this Saturday, the 27th, the fire hall is actually hosting a fire all <clears throat> festival. We will be doing a like costume contest, pumpkin patch, hot chocolate cookies. It's just a time for family to come out with their children mm -hmm. and enjoy Halloween and celebrate it in a different way. The community of Altman Fire Department 270 is hosting it. It's more so that we've done it last year and we'd like to see a better turnout if we can get all the community of Indiana to come out. Yeah, we'd love for folks to come out to an event such as that, the Fall Festival coming up. And, and what are the time parameters for it? Uh, it's supposed to start at 5 and it's ending around 9. Okay, 5 to 9. So it's an evening event. Mm -hmm. All right, wonderful, wonderful. And, it's, and you're right, they're, they're such a great organization, the Altman Firefighters. They really uh, reach out into the community. And of course, they're there to protect us when the fire siren rings and like every every firefighter uh, and fire company around, uh, they're always there for you. Uh, so that's Interact Club. Now, how many members? You're the president, right? Mm -hmm. All right, come on up and tell us uh, a little bit about how many people you have in Interact Club. We have 67 members wow. in the club now. 67? Yeah. And obviously that's not uh, that. How many are, are we talking it's, senior high only or no, junior high? No, it's all grades, 7 through well, the whole school. Mm -hmm. The whole school. Tremendous. Uh, and uh, you get together how often? Like We do like an event once a month, mm -hmm. and we meet every month, too. Wow. So that's a lot of planning that has to take part and yeah. take place. And uh, Mr. Hall does a good job of planning them. Oh, uh, yeah? When you get 67 <laughs> kids all in one room, you you got to crack the whip a little bit, huh? No, these are usually very um, dedicated students. I don't really have to discipline anything with yeah. this. This group is willing to give back to the community and... It's a great group to work with. Some of the proudest moments of my teaching career so far have been seeing the students out in the community and helping and giving back to other people. Yeah, seeing them focused like that and uh, reaching out. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm interested in knowing how it is that you decide this is an event that we want to take part in. Uh, this is something that needs to be done, and, and so let's do that. I'm thinking of, you said Floodway Park, uh, and when you went down there and painted the benches, of course, Floodway Park was one of those uh, that was damaged by flooding here ironically enough, given that name, uh, in this past year. And, and so it's always in need of sprucing up. And there's, there's probably places all over the Homer City uh, that, that could use sprucing and, and the entire district into Center Township, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Terrific. All right. Wonderful. Now, we need to talk about something else this morning, Mr. Hall, as well. Um, I'm also on the SAP team at Homer Center. It's an organization that helps students that might be dealing with issues with drug and alcohol. 
And so one of the big areas we've been working with, I've been collaborating with an IUP professor, Dr. Eric Lauber, and we, he has worked um, to prov provide a parent workshop for parents in our community, and it's called The Game of a Drug-Free Life. We've done one a month throughout the 2018 year, and we have two more events coming up, one on November 15th and one on December 13th. At this workshop, we provide pizza for the parents that come out. It's a very informative, it's run like a game where parents have the ability to participate and learn different um, issues that are affecting our community, as well as talking points they can communicate with their students. Mm -hmm. So um, how many people do you get at a typical event? Unfortunately, the turnout is a little bit lower than I'd like to see it. Usually we'll have about maybe four or five parents, but it'd be a great opportunity to see more of our parents from our community to attend to learn this valuable information. Yeah, let's kick it up. Huh? Absolutely. All right, so when's the next event? The next one is November 15th. It's at 6 to 7 at the high school. And if you're interested, you can reach out to the school or email me, and I'll be happy to provide more information. All right. Do you need to register ahead of time? Um, if we get a RSVP, a headcount beforehand, I can make sure I have enough pizza, and we always raffle off some Walmart gift cards to oh, entice parents. There you go. Um, and it is so important, isn't it? Parent-to-parent -parent is an interesting concept. Absolutely. It gives one parent, Dr. Eric Lauber, who just had three students kind of go through Indiana, and they are able, he's able to share personal experiences looking at data, looking at statistics, and looking at how he can provide information that he wish he would have known a few years ago with his students. Yeah, well, that's one of the interesting things about it is um, Dr. Lauber, of course, from IUP, uh, and you look at every school district in Indiana County, it doesn't matter what it is, uh, it doesn't matter if it's Indiana County or, or somewhere else, there is always the need for education about drugs, and especially in these last few years. Absolutely. Yeah, tremendous. Okay, so... November the 15th. November the 15th and December 13th from 6 to 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. Does it continue then into the 2019? Um, I'll have to check with him. I know we've done one a month throughout 2018. Mm -hmm. I'll have to see if the grant is extended for that op opportunity. Yeah, but very, very important for this. I, I like that a lot. All right, let's talk to our students a little bit now. Let's relax a little bit uh, and talk about you, I'll, each of you, and, and we'll ask you to introduce yourself again. I'm Caitlin Hipshin. And, and uh, what year are you? I'm a senior. You're a senior. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's talk about you. Um, what's the plan for you? You're a senior. <laughs> do you do you have an idea of what you're going to do after school? No, I haven't. Well, I'm going to go to college, mm -hmm. but I'm not sure for what yet. I'm still right. trying to figure that out. Don't have a particular area of study that is uh, really jumping out at you just yet. No, mm -hmm. I like well, I like being around children. And I like to help people out so mm -hmm. something along those lines well you certainly can find uh, all kinds of courses of study that could lead you there do you have a particular school that you're interested in yeah i'm thinking of just going up to iup there you go mm -hmm. there you go that's wonderful all right again reintroduce yourselves hi i'm tyler sprankle i'm a senior i uh plan to be attending iup this uh this next year for uh to major in finance mm-hmm it's a uh, field I'm very interested in. Yeah, well, well, we all would like to have good finances. Uh, oh, yeah. What is it about finance that appeals to you? I like the like it's almost like a game as I think of it, like to be most efficient and help people. I guess. Yeah. Like to, you know, help like take what I have known and learned and apply it to other people's lives to maybe help them out of situations. So you're looking at investment strategies and uh, those sorts of things yeah. and, and helping families with their income. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that sounds terrific. Uh, and, and you said IUP? Yes. Yeah. So you've obviously explored what they have to offer in that field. Yeah. They have a very good program and terrific. Can't wait. Terrific. All right. Now come on over. She's not feeling well today. We should tell folks that. So. Uh, hi, I'm Rebecca Smith. I'm a freshman and I'm the junior high uh, representative. You have a little bit more time than these others to figure out what you're doing, yes. but uh, have you thought about it yet? Yeah, I actually want to go for social work and mm -hmm. uh, with the foster system. Oh, okay. Very good. And uh, you've, like I said, you've got a lot of time, but have you looked at schools that... Uh... Uh, partially. I've been glancing around, seeing what I like. So far, I haven't mm -hmm. found anything that really caught my attention to continue looking for. But since you're a freshman and you have some time in school, and obviously you, you have a pretty good idea of what you'd like to do. You probably have explored other opportunities to, to work during the remainder of your school year. So yes, I have. What do uh, you do? This uh, upcoming semester, I will actually be taking childhood development, which is where we have children in Homer City area come in almost like a preschool mm -hmm. and we'll help them learn like 
the basic one plus one, green and blue, triangle and circle, and that I feel like that would help me understand a little more if I could work with the younger students and not just the teenagers and yeah. the young adults. Yeah, probably harken you back to your elementary years as well, too, huh? Yes. Yeah, and, and since you're a freshman, those years are a little bit closer than for our seniors, and so you probably remember some of the struggles of, of learning that. Even yes, when I do. Young. I actually uh, tutor two boys that live in my town, and some of the things that they're learning are the exact same things that I remember doing in my first and second grade year. Yeah, tremendous. Wonderful. Well, thank you all for coming in. We need to talk to Dr. Or Mr. Hall as well and, and find out about him and his career here at Homer Center. You've been here for how long? This is my fourth year, third your, full year. Really? Yes. Wow. And, and how many people tell you, you look like you're still a student? I do blend in with the high school students <laughs> quite often. So hopefully that'll change as I grow up a little, or age a little bit more. And tell me about the social studies curriculum. What do you teach? Right now I teach seventh grade world history. I teach ninth grade civics and I teach 10th grade world history and AP European history. Okay. So you've got a, a pretty wide range. What about the student population? Do they embrace those subjects? They do. It's, it's not a nice opportunity to teach the college level AP course for my 10th graders. I have Two of my students have already gone through that here, yeah. and it's nice to see them start to gain those college-level skills um, mm -hmm. with the difficult text reading and taking notes, and I've seen them really grow throughout the year. So that's one of my favorites. Now take me into seventh grade. Sure. Uh, so these are kids that have uh, come from the elementary school where it's a very generalized uh, education. Mm -hmm. Now they're focusing in upon a particular subject matter. How do they do? Correct. They, they're doing pretty well this year. As we're looking at our ancient civilizations, I want to make sure the students realize where we come from. Um, learning and memorizing dates is the old-fashioned way. I try to find more ways for students to really get engaged with the material. For example, today when I go back to the school, my seventh graders are learning about the mummification process. Mm -hmm. But instead of just reading about it, they're actually going to be doing an interactive online game where they're actually creating a mummy. So it gives them a chance to actually feel like the person, the embalmer, whose job it was to create the mummy. And it gives them a chance to kind of get the hands-on. And I think that's more likely to stick with the students than just taking notes from a book. Particularly good at Halloween time as well. Yes, it fits in nicely. Yeah, but there's no plan to get the rolls of toilet paper out and create uh, uh, their not own. Not today. I don't uh, not so. today. But one never knows. Correct. Well, you have to keep it inventive, don't you? And Absolutely. Yeah, well, the tremendous. Thank you all for coming in. You guys get some AP credits out of that, too, huh? You've got college credits already starting to build up there for your careers at IUP. We appreciate you all coming in. Once again, uh, for Altman on Saturday night, give us the times and uh, and, and what it is. It's a fall festival it's at the Altman Fire Department. For, uh, to come up and spend time with their children, especially for like the parents who are always gone and they have one night where it's not something that's expensive. Mm -hmm. You uh, just sign up for registration for like our costume contest. It's not any expense. Uh, it's from five to nine at uh, the Altman Fire Department. Our fire chief and uh, I believe almost 50% of our firemen will be there to help and participate. And our principal, Mr. Rainey, is actually the fire chief of Penn Run. Right. Yeah. So uh, whenever I brought this idea to the interact for both junior and senior high, he was there to uh, back me up and almost present that the fire hall of Altman is probably one of the closest Terrific. Uh, helpers that we've had for the Homer Center football team. I know that. They once they won the champions. I believe they had their, uh, they had their ceremony, ceremony there. Yeah. yeah, they had their ceremony at the fire hall. Yeah, well, that's terrific. And, and Saturday from f starting at five o'clock. Yep. Beautiful. Thank you all for coming in today. We appreciate it. Thank you for having us. It is the voice of Indiana County WCCS AM eleven sixty and one hundred one point one FM.